Hello, I am Jane King Su Cheng, one of the editors of the Manila Hello, Bulletin. Hello, I am Jane King Su Cheng, one of the Abby editors of the Manila Bulletin. This is Manila Bulletin's Welcome Forum. Welcome to Abby Hotsi. Editors and content this is Manila producers. Bulletin's Forum. Face the personalities running in the 2022 producers. national elections. Face the personalities running in the 2022 national elections. For this episode, 2022 my fellow panelists, elections. panelists joining me are for this episode, Ms. Emily my Bugarin, fellow panelists joining me are Tempo and Ms. Emily Bugarin, of City Cluster of Manila Bulletin. Assistant Head of City Cluster of Manila Bulletin. Mr. Patrick Eli Garcia. Content producer Mr. of the Manila Bulletin who covers the city of San Juan. of the Manila Bulletin who covers the city of San Juan. Mr. Lance Advinculum, member of the social media team of Advinculum, the Manila Bulletin. Member of the social media team of the Manila Bulletin. We welcome to the MB Hot Seat our guest for today. We welcome mayor to the MB Hot Seat our guest he is for today. currently the mayor, mayor of the Francis city of San Juan. He is currently the mayor of the city of San Juan. He was previously councillor for a second term. He was previously in the city. And his win as mayor in 2019 was hailed as a his win. Mayor in, in 2019 politics was hailed as, as he was able to bring up fresh leadership at the city hall. As he was able to a lot of people fresh also know him at the as city a basketball hall. player. A lot of and people also know him as a basketball from player. Pinoy Big Brother. And now, the we want to hear from Mayor from Zamora. Pinoy Big his stand on various issues. We want to hear from Mayor Zamora. His stand on various issues. And his plans for the city. First term as mayor went by. And his plans for the city. That is at the center of NCR San Juan. May we invite Mayor Zamora to share a few words to our audience. May we invite Mayor Zamora to share a few words to our audience. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat sa pag-imbita. Of course, Maraming to Jane, salamat to sa inyo Patrick, lahat sa pag-imbita. Nice to of course, to Jane, meet you. to Patrick, to Miss nice Emily to and Lance. Of course, to Mr. To Emily, Emily and, and Lance. Of course, to Mr. Emily and the entire organization of Manila Bulletin. Thank you for having me once again. I remember being here with you three years ago. Thank you for having me once again. I remember being still running. here with you three years and, ago. Uh, when again, I was still I running. coming back. And uh, for uh, again, another interview similar to for, uh, this, and another uh, interview similar to this, so that in 2022, uh, and uh, my first term is so that in 2022, over. and uh, my first and term is to be able almost to over. share with you today our plans and, and programs. I'm happy to be able to for share with you today term. our plans and, and programs. Also if, uh, for uh, the second term, and also if regarding uh, uh, you would like to discuss what you have anything done during my first term, uh, I'll be happy what you have done during my first term, I'll be happy. May we invite Miss Emily to start? Asking the questions. May we invite Ms. First Emily and foremost, start. thank you, Mayor Asking Zamora, for accepting First our invitation. First and foremost, thank you, Mayor Zamora, for accepting our invitation. invitation. San Juan faced a tremendous a challenge a during the start San of the pandemic. San Juan faced a tremendous challenge Since during the start of the pandemic. The first spread of COVID Since was, a lot of was at a mall in the city. The first spread of How COVID did you was at a mall in the city. Pandemic. How did what you prepare for this health pandemic? Well, first of all, what there's no real preparation well, first of all there's no done real because this is unprecedented be done. Uh, because this every is mayor uh, in metro manila in the philippines mayor, even in other countries in metro manila in the philippines no, even none in other of us countries, were ever able to prepare for no, something none like of this us so were it's something that we really have to for something like this so it's something that we really have along to the way as the days go by learn along the way just to share with you march 6 2020 just to share with you march i received the call from the department of health and they told me that they were going to visit the department of health and they told me that they were going to visit me and the lane around lunchtime they arrived at my office and they told and me that the first local transmission of COVID-19 in the Philippines the first local transmission of COVID-19 in the Philippines not from was San Juan confirmed to be a Filipino not our from San Juan Greenal Shopping Center frequented so our immediately Greenal Shopping that, Center uh, that so no immediately we proceeded that, to uh, the prayer hall time. we proceeded uh, to the Greenal Shopping Center the prayer hall and we immediately uh, disinfected and sanitized the area we immediately disinfected and sanitized the area spoke to the mall and management of that same Green day I spoke to I the mall them, management of this is the situation and I told the them, first local this is the situation in the country the first local transmission in the country someone who frequents confirmed to be not just the prayer hall but the mall itself not just the and prayer hall no but the mall itself. to determine and there is no way the thousands for us to determine going to the mall the thousands every single of people day. Going, going to the infected. mall every single day. So we day. had to make a decision. Have been infected. I so we had to I make a decision to the mall management to close. I immediately spoke to the, the mall Greenland management to close. And in fairness to them, they agreed. The Greenland Shopping Center. Because they and understood in fairness the to them, they agreed seriousness because of they what understood we were facing. the seriousness so that's where of what we were it facing. It all started. So that's where he was patient it number all five. Started. He was, he was then confined in Cardinal five. Santos Medical Center. He was then confined in Again, Cardinal Santos first, Medical uh, Center. Uh, Again, the first confinement uh, of a uh, uh, local transmission patient of a uh, in the local country. transmission patient, and uh, he passed away in after a few days. And uh, a few he days passed away after, after a few his days. His wife passed away as well. A few well. days after 
his and wife passed this is away where it as all well. started so and we had to this is where it all started so we had a to lot of implement localized lockdowns early on without a lot of any localized lockdowns early on without any yet. because this was very national new government to us. directive yet so because this was very new to in us. coordination with so the, in coordination the with the, the doh we had to the implement early on the doh our we had to implement early which on national protocols yet protocols at the time, which were because national there were none. protocols yet at the time and because remember, there were none I remember a, an MMDA meeting attending a with all the Metro Manila mayors as all of these with started. all the Metro Manila mayors none of us were wearing all masks of these then because none of us were no wearing masks really knew then because what to do no one and really knew I was tasked what to, to do read and I was tasked the Metro Manila Council resolution read stating that the Metro Manila Council resolution now be stating that that malls the, would now be closed there was going to be an impending uh, lockdown there the was going to be an impending lockdown. A few days after that, we were invited Metro to Malacanang. A few days after and that, the we were invited to Malacanang. Announced and the president himself, the already ECQ, announced which started middle of ECQ, March. If I'm not mistaken, the middle of March. If I'm not mistaken, so Emily, March, uh, 16. if you ask me how so we prepared for it, there's Emily, no real preparation. If you ask me how we prepared it's something for it, there's no real the way. preparation. We it's something you learn along the way. The lockdown we of uh, Metro Manila March 16. Lockdown of this is uh, Metro Manila we, uh, March 16. No, as the ECQ, the enhanced uh, community quarantine. No, as the ECQ, and the enhanced community quarantine. Everyone else already. Had to do the same. Everyone else already for had to do the same. I believe a month, a month and a half, we were under for, ECQ. I believe a month, a and month and a half, we were slowly, under ECQ. This was east. And uh, slowly, when uh, things this was got a east. little better. But again, when uh, things got a little phases better. Phases of but the again, in past two years, phases we had to of the past two years, and we then had to loosen up, implement. And then and then tighten up, loosen then up, loosen up. So it was uh, and then tighten up. It was then loosen like up. A, uh, it was a roller coaster uh, ride for us. It was like a uh, roller coaster really ride was for us. The vaccination, but the key really was we all wanted to protect ourselves. We all wanted no to yet protect ourselves, but there was no. The vaccines game changer yet. in all of this is the vaccination. The game changer really right in now, all of this is the vaccination. Fast forward to the present. And right now, if I will. Fast forward San to Juan, the present. Which was the ground zero of COVID nineteen in Juan, the Philippines, which was the ground zero of COVID nineteen in the Philippines, hailed as is now a government hailed model for COVID response. A because of our high vaccination response. rate, we are now experiencing. Because of our high vaccination rate, being able we to are now experiencing. Being able to live number of cases we've ever had was just two cases. Number, number of cases we've ago. ever had was just two cases. And uh, it's about five days right ago. Right now we are at two hundred sixty percent. Right now we a are two hundred sixty percent. We have vaccinated two hundred sixty percent of our target population. Means we have vaccinated two hundred. Some people may ask why why double why some people may ask why why double uh, why times two point uh, five one hundred percent times and this uh, is because we also one hundred percent. Everyone. And this is because we also vaccinated. Everyone, everyone studying in San Juan. Working in San Juan. Not just everyone our studying own in citizens, San Juan, but not at just time, our own citizens. Myself, but at even the time, if we vaccinate our residents. Myself, even if we but vaccinate people from residents. other cities can enter San Juan. But people from useless. other cities can enter so San Juan. Aside from vaccinating our locals, the so first aside from order really was to vaccinate locals, the first those working. Order really was to vaccinate regardless those if you working are in the mall, in the Changi, regardless if you are in the mall, BPOs, in the Changi, in the bank, made it very accessible to everyone working in San Juan. Made it very accessible to everyone working in San Juan. We moved on to those studying in San Juan. And as soon as we finished vaccinating our population and our essential workers, we opened up the vaccination to everyone, every Filipino, regardless of where you live, even if you're from other cities, other provinces, we opened it up to everyone. And I guess that is something that really changed the game and has brought about our normalcy here in San Juan at this point. My second question. You are running for a second term as a mayor. This time you are leading with a wide margin according to a survey. What can the people of San Juan expect from you this time? Alam niyo po yung aming napaka simple ngunit napaka powerful na campaign slogan ng 2019 was makabagong San Juan. 
two very powerful words. Pakabago. Progressive. Innovative. This is something that I believe I was able to do in my first three years as mayor. What will we do during the second term? A lot of this will be the continuity of the programs. Ang campaign pitch namin yan para sa pagpapatuloy ng makabagong sanman. Because COVID derailed a lot of our programs. Na. My first three years, two years, and a few months of that were against COVID. In fact, yeah, we're, we're still in the month of March now. So two years and about 15 days. My term was all about COVID response and interventions. But in spite of that, we were able to implement a lot of what we promised. But if you talk about infrastructure, there are a lot that still have to be continued because during the lockdowns, there was no construction, there was no movement. So all of these were derailed. Second, a lot of our plans and programs for the first term had to take a back seat because we had to realign our funding Remember, we were never able to budget for COVID-19. Our 2019 and 20 budget were based on our platforms, our plans and programs, not about COVID. So we had to realign whatever funding we had. And the biggest challenge, of course, was during the lockdown, businesses were closed. And this is where we get our taxes. Business taxes, even those paying real property taxes could not pay because their businesses were closed as well. So the challenge really was the funding for all of these. And now that we are going back to normal slowly, businesses are reopening. I am optimistic that this 2022, uh, 2023, 2024, going towards 2025, my second term, will be, we will be able to complete everything that we had promised although as i mentioned e even in spite of the pandemic we were able to start our high rise in city public housing this is a 22 story high rise in city socialized public housing the first in the country that is high rise and uh, we are now on the eighth story 14 to go and we will be able to complete the first one the second Building is a 23-story high-rise in city public housing, which is about to start already. We're already mobilizing the construction. We were able to complete a lot of our infrastructure projects in terms of our barangay halls, multipurpose buildings, wooden covered basketball courts. Our basketball courts in San Juan use maple wood, the same wood used in the Araneta Coliseum and Mall of Asia Arena. So we are upgrading our sports and recreational facilities. We were able to fulfill a major campaign promise, which is to make San Juan a smart city, although not yet 100%, but we were able to provide one is to one tablets to all our public school students, something that the previous administration said was impossible to do, but we were able to do that. Right now, each and every San Juan Enyo public school student has his or her own tablet, and they have a dedicated fiber optic internet connection in their homes for online education. That's 7,000 households with modems for public school students. And uh, the grade three through six students of Paniglabanan Elementary School have laptops because they are the pilot school for digital learning as chosen by the DICT. So these are major undertakings that we were able to fulfill in spite of the pandemic. And we were able to improve our San Juan Medical Center. Before I became mayor, 80 to 90% of the complaints in our city were towards the hospitals. Now we are able to make it a real public hospital. We now experience zero balance billing. People can get confined and uh, can get discharged with paying zero. Now they don't have to pay for anything. We are lucky that we have a Malasakit Center through the help of uh, Senator Bongo and of course, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. So this allows for various 
funding from uh, different national government agencies. And whatever is left is covered by the city government. That is why we're able to achieve zero. Also, we have funding up to 250,000 pesos in partner private hospitals such as Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Dati kapag sabihin Cardinal Santos, pang mayaman lang. Ngayon, ang pangkaraniwang San Juanenyo, nakapagpapagamot na sa Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Regardless of what they need, MRI, CT scan, all of the very expensive diagnostics, we can shoulder and uh, they end up paying nothing. These are things that they never experienced before. Now, if a San Juanenyo passes away, there's automatic 30,000 pesos. Funeral assistance, so libring uh, funeral assistance, if they need cremation, we still are able to provide for this. So I have realigned our funding to cover more social services, something that the people really need, more so now that we are under a pandemic. Another question. There are a lot of business, big and small, that were affected during the pandemic. We are hopefully in a post-pandemic stage. So what are your plans to help these businesses? Well, first of all, what did we do during the pandemic for the businesses? We understand the challenges they're facing, the closures, and they had to re remove a lot of people who are working. These are realities that we had to face. One thing I did immediately, as soon as the mall closed down, I, I spoke to Greenhill Shopping Center then and I told them, please give concessions to all your locators. Don't charge them your normal rental fees because understandably, they cannot pay. Would you rather they all close and your mall will not have a single locator anymore? So that's something that I personally told them and they were very receptive of it. So... For the first uh, few months, there were concessions from uh, the mall management for the locators. Next, how, how can we revive businesses? Again, people would want to enter a mall, a restaurant, or a store feeling safe. So what did we do? When the vaccination program started, we immediately set up a vaccination center in our main commercial area which is the Green Hill Shopping Center. We had two sites in Green Hills. One was in the Theater Mall, and uh, the other one was in V Mall. Why? So that there would be no reason for them not to get vaccinated. They will just have to walk a few minutes. They will not have to pay for anything. They can get vaccinated. Their first dose, their second dose, and eventually their boosters were also given to them. We passed, well, uh, I issued two executive orders, executive order number 81, which was an executive order encouraging, not mandating because you cannot do that, encouraging in employers to get their employees vaccinated. Every time an establishment is able to vaccinate 100% of its employees, we install a 100% fully vaccinated sticker so that someone who would like to eat in a restaurant, once they see this seal, the safety seal, they will know, okay, I will enter this establishment because I know it is safe. I will not worry because the employees are fully vaccinated. Executive order number 82 is the VIP program. That is the vaccine incentive program. This gave, even up to now, it still gives incentives and discounts to anyone who can show a vaccination card. So this is a win-win situation for both ends. For the vaccinated individual, he or she can get discounts and privileges once they enter a certain establishment that is part of our VIP program. And on the other hand, for the establishment, it increases their foot traffic because now anyone who has a vaccine card can potentially be a customer because they know that there are discounts and privileges waiting for them. So these are out-of-the-box ideas that we came up with. And I believe it helped our uh, businesses survive during the pandemic. We were also able to secure 
around 800 slots of 5,000 pesos each for our changueros who were affected. You have to be masipag huh? in terms of communicating with the national government. There will always be funding available. Pero itong funding nito, they will not fall on your lap. You have to seek out for them. And this is where your being uh, resourceful will come in handy. Hindi pwedeng intayin mo lang bumagsak sa'yo. Kailangan, you have to seek out for it. You have to communicate with various departments, communicate with cabinet secretaries, securities funding, and implement. These are things that we were able to do. We also had 19 waves of food packs, 19 waves of ayuda. Kami po ang pinakamaraming beses na namahagi ng food packs ayuda sa buong Pilipinas. 19 times during this pandemic. Ano po ang pinapamahagi natin? Bigas, delata, noodles, mga mask, alcohol, things that people need things that will help them survive. Ang pinaka-battle cry ko, walang San Juanenyo ang magugutom nitong pandemya. And it really helped them because a lot of them nawala ng trabaho, nagsara yung negosyo, hindi makapasok kasi sabi ng mga negosyante, no work, no pay, sarado ng ilang buwan, wala silang papasukan. So we had to really help them. A lot of our budget was realigned to the Ayuda. And during the course of all of this, even up to now, during the campaign, every time I present everything we did, ang pinakamalakas sa palakpakan parate, yung sa Ayuda. Kasi unprecedented siya. And the tendency is, nako-compare. Siyempre, sabi, oh, kami sa San Juan, 19 waves na kami. Yung mga kamag-anak namin sa ibang lugar, hindi. So, nakaka, nakakataba ng puso. Knowing that it's something that they appreciate. So all of this, uh, we were able to do to help our uh, businesses, especially those who are San Juan uh, residents, because we can legally issue financial assistance to them because they are constituents. So kung nawalan ka ng trabaho, kung nagsarang yung negosyo, pwede kami mag-issue ng financial assistance sa kanila. At yun po ang aming ginawa nitong pandemya. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Zamora, for sharing all the solutions and the challenges um, you overcame the past term. But we have a few more questions from Patrick. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor. It's really a pleasure to have you here with us. So my first question would be, your win before as mayor was announced in the media as the one ending the hold of a political clan in San Juan. How is your relationship with them considering that a senatorial candidate is part of the unity in Slate? Well, in terms of relationship, now you have to you have to understand that their family has certain factions. So if you ask relationship, I may have a different relationship with Faction A, Faction B, <laughs> it's quite hard to explain. But uh, if you talk about uh, Mayor Guia Gomez and I, looking back during the years we were together, uh, we, were, we had a good personal and professional relationship from 2010 up to 2015, except that uh, politics uh, came along. In fact, family politics was the main source of uh, whatever problems we faced. Because if it were just Mayor Guia Gomez and I, I believe everything would be okay. But you have to understand that their family, uh, their family members uh, may have different views or different uh, dreams and aspirations for their next generation. Sa madaling salita, tayo nila maging mayor si Francis Zamora. Kasi they have to protect yung younger generation nila na gusto nila maging mayor din ng San Juan. But in 2019, after I won, this is something that I have not said publicly, but I will say it now, nakapag-usap kami ni Mayor Gia Gomez. I, I visited her in her home a few days after 
I won. Uh, we had a good chat. Uh, and uh, she also shared about her challenges because uh, there were certain expectations from her no, na dapat kinampanya niya yung kalaban ko. No? Sinisisi siya bakit natalo yung kalaban ko. You know, a lot of these uh, issues came about and you know what I told her was as far as I'm concerned no? tapos na naman yung election. No? Ito na yung Naging decision ng San Juan. I hope that it's something that uh, those in the losing side will understand. Nanggaling din naman ako sa talo. Na-experience ko rin how, how it is to lose in 2016. But what did I do? After I lost, I strived hard. In fact, harder than the first time. And the three years that I pushed myself to continue on, even without a position, it's something that I believe propelled me to where I am now. Because yung three years after, <coughs> yung three years after natalo ako, ang touring sa akin, ng kalahati ng San Juan na bumoto sa akin, ako pa rin ang mayor nila. In fact, I was like the de facto mayor of San Juan during that time. And I never let them down. Even in a personal capacity, even without an official title, an official position, ginambanan ko pa rin yung tungkulin ko sa kanila bilang kanilang mayor. No? Kahit hindi ako tunay na halal na mayor. And that is something that helped me because I was able to show to them my dedication and determination to continue on. So, Hindi naman kami nakakapag-usap ng kabilang partido. No? We don't really get to talk. But uh, in terms of uh, Mayor Gia Gomez and I, wala naman akong problem sa kanya. I hope wala rin siyang problem sa akin. And a lot of her supporters are with us now. In fact, uh, her biggest support base uh, is with me already. In fact, even after we won the elections, dumipat na sila, nagbigay ng suporta. When I ran in 2019, I only had seven barangay captains as my allies out of 21. Now all 21 are my allies. They shifted their support within a week's time after I won. Same with the Kagawad, same with the SK chairpersons. A lot of her... City Hall Department heads are still my City Hall Department heads now. A lot of her employees are still my employees now. Niyakap ko sila, minahal ko sila. No? I never made them feel, oh ano kayo, mga estrada empleyado kayo, out kayo dito, no? In fact, I will always use this person as example. Councillor Alan Silvano ran as their councillor. He did not make it. But eventually, I took him in as the department head because, one, he is well-educated, he is from Xavier, and uh, he was able to prove himself well as a city councillor. I appointed him to head our pop dev, and he is always my example that my choice of appointees will never be politically based. It will always be based on qualifications, experience, what they can do for the city. So if you talk about the other side of the family, they are the ones who fielded all our opponents now. So lahat ng kalaban namin from mayor, vice mayor, congresswoman to the councillors, sila ang naglagay sa amin. And uh, it goes to show also na yung direction ng magkahiwalay na faction magkaiba. No? So yung side nung kila Mayor Gia Gomez and uh, former Senator J.V. Harris ito, <clears throat> tahimik naman ngayon. No, hindi naman kami inaaway or ginugulo. No? In fact, nafe-feel naman namin sa kila na, na 
supportive sila sa ating administration. Supportive <clears throat> in a sense that they are not derailing or they are not going against any of our plans and programs. Now, the other side, the side of uh, former Senator Jingo Estrada, yun yung sinasabi kong lahat ng kalaban namin, kandidato nila. In fact, yung kalaban ng kapatid ko, na pinsan niya, no? uh, siya yung tumatakbong kongreswoman nila, and their counselors, they voted against the ordinance appropriating funding for vaccines in San Juan. Can you imagine that? Ang sanggunian panlunsod po ng San Juan, nagpasa ng ordinansa, allocating 50 million pesos to procure COVID-19 vaccines. They voted against this. Very unimaginable. No? So, dun mo makikita na yung mga kandidato nila, hindi na nagdidesisyon base sa pa pangangailangan o kapakanan ng taong bayan. Purely para lang kumontra. So that's the reality. Uh, even yung annual budget namin, they voted against it also. And obviously, no, ito yung instructions sa kanila na gawin. So yun yung situation regarding the uni team. I am uh, very supportive, of course, of the candidacy of my president, Bongbong Marcos, and my vice president, Sara Duterte. But in terms of uh, one of their candidates, paano ko naman susuportahan yun kung ang lahat ng kalaban namin sa San Juan galing sa kanya? Paano ko naman susuportahan yun kung yung mga konsyal nila bumoboto laban sa bakuna na kailangan na kailangan ng aming mga mamamayan. So I cannot do that. Thank you po. Uh, for my next question, you have come out in public endorsing the campaign of Bongbong Marcos and Sara Duterte. I mean, how did this go about? What made you endorse their campaign? Or was it just a party decision? Una sa lahat, no, ang inisip ko talaga, yung city ko. Bongbong Marcos, was born in Lourdes Hospital in the boundary of San Juan and Mandaluyong. All his life, before his father became president, he lived in 204 Ortega Street, Barangay May Tunas, in the city of San Juan. Tunay na San Juanen siya. At alam ko, pag siya maging Pangulo ng Pilipinas, hindi niya papabayaan ang lungsod kung saan siya lumaki mula bata hanggat naging pangulo ang kanyang ama. So I know that if and when he wins, which I believe he will win, yung six years niya as president, kasabay ng last six years ko as mayor, and alam ko rin na yung mga pangarap ko para sa San Juan, yung mga hindi namin natatapos pa ngayon na kinakalangan ng national government funding kailangan ng national government support, alam ko matatapos yan. Kasi alam ko, kapag ako'y lumapit sa ating mahal na Pangulo at sabihin ko, Mr. President, ito po ang pangangailangan ng San Juan, ang lungsod kung saan ka lumaki, ang lungsod kung hanggang ngayon saan kayo nakatira, their ancestral home is still there up to now. Alam kong hindi niya papabayaan ang San Juan. So that is my primary consideration knowing that he will never let our city down. He has served as vice governor and governor and as congressman and a senator, run as vice president. If you talk about various positions that he has held, he has had the experience in running a local government. He has also had the legislative experience as a congressman and as a senator. So both aspects of governance, the executive side, the legislative side, may karanasan siya. Kay Sara Duterte naman, nag-vice mayor, nag-mayor. Ako, nag-vice mayor, nag-mayor. So alam ko, kapag vice mayor at mayor ka, lalong-lalo na ng city of Davao, na napakalaki. 
it is so huge, it is so complex. But he, she was able to do her job well as vice mayor and mayor. And I will always be thankful for the support of her father, President Duterte. Lalong-lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Kasi lahat ng kinalangan ng San Juan, binigay po niya. Yung experience ko with President Duterte through Senator Bongo, first term ko, mayor, lahat ng kailangan ng San Juan nakuha namin. Itong good, close, professional and personal relationship with the national government, specifically with the president, with the office of the president, ang laki ng naitulong niyan sa akin lungsod from 2019 to 2022. And this is what I am expecting from 2022 to 2028 with a President Bongbong Marcos. So yan ang aking iniisip. Yung mga pabahay na binabanggit ko kanina, sa ngayon, dalawa pa lang yan. Siyempre, I would want more because eventually I want someone to be like Singapore. Yung aming mga informal settlers, uh, we will relocate them to high-rise in city public housing buildings para mawala na yung ating ISFs sa ating mga barangay. Hindi kaya ng LGU mag We will need national government funding. Yung aming mga pumping stations sa mga low-lying areas namin para tuluyan ng mawala ang baha sa aming lungsod because we are surrounded by uh, waterways. Hindi kaya ng San Juan mag-isa yan. Kailangan ko ng national government funding dyan. Yung pagiging full, smart city namin with Wi-Fi access in all the barangays, we will need support from the DICT such as how they have helped us when they provided one is to one laptops, I'm sorry, one is to one tablets to our public school students and laptops to our select grade 3 to 6 uh, levels in Pinaglaban Elementary School. Yung aming mga programa pang kalusugan, malaking bahagi niyan, yung tulong ng Department of Health at ng DSWD. So kung hindi ako tutulungan ng national government, magiging mahirap para sa akin. At kung tulong lang sa national government ang pinag-usapan natin, para sa akin, ang malalapitan ko ay yung tunay na San Juan Enyo. At yan po si Bongbong Marcos. So for my uh, last question, Mayor, you're known as a really popular basketball player. So what are your plans for the youth of San Juan? And uh, as follow-up, how did sports influence your work as a chief executive of the city? Well, uh, I started playing basketball at a very young age, from grade school to high school. I played in LaSalle Green Hills. I played in the UAP for the LaSalle University. I was the team captain of the back-to-back -back championship team in, 1998, in, uh, in 1998 and 1999. So we won two UAP championships. I played in the PBL for several teams. I won two championships in Wellcoat. Uh, uh, with Wellcoat in the PBL, I was drafted in the PBA by uh, the Santa Lucia Realtors, although I was not able to play. So I have had uh, several years of experience as a, an athlete. And how has this helped me? Number one, the physical and mental discipline of an athlete is something that you can use very well as a mayor. Your determination, your motivation to reach a goal Now, as mayor, you are tested physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. It's no different with having to wake up at 3 in the morning to get to La Salle at 5 in the morning to train for 5 hours and then after that go to school. And then the next day you do it all over again. So, kinakalangan yung Disiplina sa pag-iisip, disiplina sa katawan. Nakakatulong talaga yan. Now, if I have activities as early as 5 a.m., I can wake up. If the media will say, Mayor, can I interview at 6 a.m.? I can wake up. 
if I have to stay up late because I have 20 scheduled events for the day, I can stay up late and still wake up the next day. Yung disiplina, importante yan. Also, as a team captain of a, a championship team, yung leadership skills mo, importante. I was a team captain, but we had star players in our team. Hindi naman ako star player. Alam ko naman yung role ko sa team. Marami kami star players. Pero kahit mas magaling sila sa akin, nakikinig sila sa akin. And everyone knew what they had to do. Sila taga-score, ako taga-rebound, taga-depensa. Sila, may kanya-kanyang role sila. And this is something na na-manage ko. Even if they were more popular than me, even if they were better than me, but I was able to earn their respect. So as a team captain, I was able to keep the team together. It's similar to the Chicago Bulls. He had several star players, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. But a good leader can keep all of these players intact for the same goal. So ganun din be, being a mayor. You have to manage a very, very complex and dynamic framework of people, of organizations. You have to be able to balance the politics. Siyempre, sila-sila, nagkakapolitika yan, kakaingitan, nagkakasiraan. Everyone wants to be closest to the mayor. No? Ganyan, ang, ganyan ang reality eh. So, kana kailangan ma-manage mo sila ng mabuti. And ito, again, on a personal note, before we won two UAP championships in 1998 and 1999, I experienced losing to UST several years, sunod-sunod, as a UAP player. So, ang first year ko sa Lasal playing was 1995. So, from 1995, 96, 97, Sunod-sunod, talo kami sa UAP Championship. But eventually, in 1998 and 1999, we won. Ganon din yung natalo ko ng 2016. I suffered a very painful loss. I lost by just 1,000 votes. They had all the advantages you can ever imagine. But I had the people on my side. Pero natalo pa rin ako. Aminado naman ako eh. But I never gave up. Yung pinagdaanan ko dati bilang isang atleta, bilang isang player na pag matalo ka, you just bounce back. No? You lose a game, there's one more next week. You lose a UAP season, there's one more next year. You lose successive UAP seasons, there will always be one more. Ang mahirap sa election, tatlong taong ka maghihintay. Ang Olympics, four years. Sa PBA, ang next conference, three months lang. Sa UAP, one year lang. Sa election, tatlong taon. Naisipin mo gaano katagal yon But again, no, looking back at my experience, nung natalo ako noong 2016, no, parang nung natalo lang ako nung naglalaro pa ako ng basketball sa UAP, I knew what to do. No? I rose from a painful loss I pushed myself hard in fact harder uh, a lot lot harder than before and ito yung resulta ngayong pandemia nakita ko ng San Juan nangunguna sa laban I was always out I was always with them COVID never became a reason for me not to go out Tungkulin ko bilang mayor na pangunahan ang laban sa COVID in spite of the risk of being infected. In fact, I got infected once. My wife is a cancer survivor. My children are very young. But I had to make them understand that this is my duty. That as mayor, I have to do this and I will do this. Maingat ako. Hindi ako takot, pero maingat ako. Pero nakita ng San Juan na sa gitna ng pandemya, nandun ako para sa kanila. So all of this is derived from the hard work and the dedication that I put in 
when I was an athlete. So yun ang value talaga na. So thank you, Mayor Zamora. Thank you. Iba talaga yung investment of experience and going back to the past and you know applying it to your current situation. So it was very inspiring. We also have another set of questions from our social media. Our social media followers, which is at 3.5 million now. And we have Lance from our social media team who will be asking the questions. Thanks, Miss Jane. So as what Miss Jane uh, mentioned, uh, Mayor uh, Zamora, the next questions came from our online followers. First, we have from Facebook follower Patricia May Mendoza. What motivated you to seek another term as an one city mayor? Is there anything you still need to do or plan to implement to merit a new term? Well, ang aking motto talaga, no? yung ating pinaglalaban ay makabagong San Juan. And what are we trying to fix? We are trying to fix a system that was engulfed by a 50-year reign of a previous uh, administration. So, ang daming kailangan baguhin. Ang daming kailangan ayusin. Not just infrastructure-wise, but also the mindset of people, the discipline of our constituents. I will also talk about how our public servants and civil servants face our citizens. It's a total change of not just uh, infrastructure, not just social services, but also the framework of how a city should be run. So sa unang tatlong taon natin, nakita ko naman na malaki na ang pinagbago, ngunit we should not stop here. If uh, given the chance uh, to be mayor again this second term and uh, again on a third term, the nine years will be able to give me enough time to implement all of these changes that I had promised in 2019 and again to complete all of the plans and programs that were derailed by COVID-19. Gusto ko talaga in the end, though, San Juan will be the model city, not just in Metro Manila, but also in the country. And I believe that we are on the right track. Ngayon, kapag sabihin San Juan, nagiging halimbawa kami, nagiging benchmark kami, nagiging template kami ng maayos na pamamalakad. And no less than President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, said that in his State of the Nation address when he, he talked about our success in the vaccination program. So, nakak-inspire no? na nakikita natin na ang San Juan kinikilala. In fact, ang sinasabi ko nga ngayon, binalik natin ang San Juan sa mapa ng Pilipinas. When you watch the news three, four, five times a week, you would watch something about San Juan. And it's always good news. It's always something that we are doing right, we're doing well. Sa Manila Bulletin nga, if I will be able to count correctly, mga 20 times yun na ako nilagay sa front page. So, ibig sabihin, siguro may ginagawa akong tama to deserve a, a front page uh, feature. So, I will not stop here. Since wala akong kalaban, ang dating sa akin, kahit yung kalaban namin, alam na ang maganda ginagawa ni Mayor Francis. Kasi siguro kung pangit ginagawa ko, di dapat may kalaban ako ngayon. But since wala akong kalaban, maybe they realize that it will be a futile effort on their part. So all of these uh, have uh, pushed me to seek another term. In fact, ang plano ko talaga is to complete the nine years. Because I really want to leave a mark here in San Juan. Gusto ko maalala nila na nagkaroon sila ng Mayor Francis Zamora, lalo na ngayong COVID. No? What I always say is darating yung panahon no? After, pagkalipas na mga taon at dekada no? pag magbalik tanaw sila sa panahong 2020, 2021, 2022. Gusto ko maalala nila 
Na nung panahon ng COVID-19, meron silang Mayor Francis Zamora na hindi sila ginutom, hindi sila pinabayaan magkasakit. No? I'm always in a mindset that tells me yung pagiging mayor ay blessing. Hindi lahat ang tao nabibigyan ng pagkakataon maging mayor. Ngayon na nandito na ako, I will do my very best because this will never happen again. Kung maga, stage to sa buhay natin na hindi, na ma, hindi mo na mababalik. No, gusto ko, no regrets. After my term, after my three terms, God willing, no regrets. No, hindi yung, sana ginawa ko to. Dapat, ito yung in-implement ko. Naku, dapat hindi ko to ginawa, di ba? Ang pagsisisi na sa dulo eh. Maganda yung matapos mo tong lahat, masabi mo, nagampanan ko aking tungkulin na maayos, wala akong pinagsisisihan, and most importantly, nagustuhan ng mamamayan yung service na binigay mo. Thank you so much, Mayor Zamora. The next question is from Facebook follower Neil Holiano. Do you think that your type of leadership reflects the leadership type of the presidential and vice presidential candidates that you endorse, which happens to be BBM, Sarah? Ako kasi I'm a, a very hands-on leader. No? Hands-on person talaga ako. I'm as OC as you can get. <laughs> But my being OC helps me. Kasi hindi ubra sa akin yung pwede na. Ako talaga kailangan as perfect as it can be. No? Hindi man talaga perfect na perfect because no, there will always be issues and concerns that will uh, prevent it from being always 100% perfect. But at the very least, no, strive for perfection all the time. Yung pagiging masigasig po natin, no? Sinabi ko kanina, no? Nung natalo ako, three years inintay ko para tumakbo ulit. Si BBM, six years na po ang inintay niya. Imagine that, that that's such a long time, no? But I saw in the last six years, hindi rin siya tumigil, no? In his personal capacity, tumutulong siya. Yung visibility niya, yung mga programs niya, advocacies niya, tinuloy niya pa rin. Even itong COVID, hindi man siya nakaupo, ginawa pa rin niya. So I saw in him something that I did also, which is not to give up, to continue striving, to be determined. Kaya nakikita ko kapag maging pangulo na natin siya, alam ko hindi niya rin sasayangin ito Because this will be a very, very good opportunity for him to leave a legacy. No? Talking about Mayor Sara Duterte, yung pagiging vice mayor niya at pagiging mayor, lalo na. No? Kung ako nga, ang aking constituency is just over 100,000. Sila, lagpas sa milyon ang kanilang mga mamamayan doon. So, just imagine... Yung ginagawa ko, siguro yung ginagawa niya, times 100 ang ginagawa ko sa laki ng Davao at sa dami ng kanila mga mamamayan. And because she has been trained as a local chief executive for a very long time, no? ito yung skills na kailangan mo kasi. Para sa akin, ha, yung pagiging presidente, vice-presidente, malaking bagay yung may executive experience ka Because running a city is like running a country, except that in a bigger magnitude. As mayor, meron din akong councilors. Ito yung parang senate ko at saka mga congressman. Sila yung nagpapasa ng mga batas. Meron akong department heads na parang sila yung cabinet secretary. So it's the same thing, except that in a larger scale. So both of them have served in the executive branch, naging governor, Si BBM, naging vice governor. Kaya nakikita ko na handa sila maglingkod bilang pangulo at pangalawang pangulo ng Pilipinas. Thank you, sir. Next question is from Facebook uh, follower Joel Lorenzo. Your win has a big impact on ending a popular political dynasty. But you are running once again and your father was once part of San Juan's politics. 
are you now building as a moral political dynasty? At the end of the day, ang tao naman ang pumipili. I will share with you, our surveys before the start of the campaign, 13% na lang, no? 13% ang support base ng Estrada sa San Juan. That means we are at around 85% with probably 2% undecided. Sinervey ko uh, ang uh, sarili ko, ang aking kapatid na tumatakbong kongresuman. At yun ang lumalabas. What does this mean? What is the issue about magkapatid ba, magkamag-anak ba? O ang importante ba sa tao ay natutugunan yung kanilang pangangailangan? Because what we were able to show during my first term, kapag ang congressman at ang mayor ay nagtutulungan, ang dami mong pwedeng gawin. Like what I said earlier, no, hindi ko kaya lahat ito bilang mayor lamang. I will need a congressman or a congresswoman who will be supportive of our plans and programs. It just so happened na mag-ama kami ni Congressman Noni Samora at kapatid ko ngayon ang tumatakbong congresswoman. The people will decide. If we follow the surveys, 85% are in favor of I and my sister running together, then it is safe to say that it is not an issue. To them, rather, what is important is na patunayan namin nung nagsabay kami ng aking ama na si Congressman Noni Samora, ang laki ng naitulong nito sa aming mga mamamayan. Naramdaman nila yung pagbabago. Coming from a 50-year reign of the Estradas, yung unang tatlong taon natin bilang mayor, nakita nila yung kaibahan. Something that they never were able to Gage. Kasi dati walang choice. Dati walang comparison. Dati akala nila, ah, yung level of service, yun na pala yung pinakamataas. Ngayon, nung naging mayor tayo, nakita nila, pwede palang mas higitan pa yun. Pwede palang libre ang public hospital. Pwede palang one is to one ang uh, tablets sa public school students. Pwede palang yung mga basketball court, hindi semento, pero wooden. Pwede palang magpatayo ng high-rise in city public housing. Bakit yung dati, five stories lang. Pwede palang wala nang binabayaran sa mga pangangailangan sa private hospitals. Ang mahirap, pwede pala mag Cardinal Santos Medical Center. So ito yung mga naging dahilan kung bakit masaya sila na magsasama kami ng aking kapatid. Hindi issue ang pagiging magkapatid. Ang importante sa kanila, naglilingkod kami na maayos at natutugunan namin ang kanilang mga pangangailangan. Thank you so much, Mayor Zamora. Now we have a Twitter question from Mia Villa Luna. Looking at your slate for councillors, a lot of them are basketball players. We have nothing against sportsmen running for elective positions, but can the San Juan City voters know what their general advocacy would be once elected as councillor? Okay, again, ako basketball player. Naging maayos ba ako mayor? I think so. I believe the answer is yes. I started as a city councilor. I got my experience there. Naging vice mayor ako for six years. Naging mayor ako for three years. Yung mga kandidato po natin, tatlo sa kanila, PBA players. James Yap, Paul Artadi, Don Aliado. Are they running for mayor? No. They are running for city councilor, which is an entry-level position in the local government. You have to start somewhere, right? Hindi naman mayor tinatakbo nila, hindi naman congressman tinatakbo nila, hindi naman senador o presidente. Nagsisimula sila sa pinakamababang posisyon sa lokal na pamahalaan. As a basketball player, yung mga sinabi ko kanina, yung disiplina, sa katawan, sa pag-iisip, yung determinasyon, pagiging goal-oriented, lahat yan, meron din sila. Because they went through The same thing that I went through. In fact, more so sila. Kasi naging professional sila. Ako hindi. I will talk about Paul Artadi first. Paul Artadi is entering his third term. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya first-timer. 
Naglingkod siya since 2016 and he has six years of legislative experience. So, wala akong nakikitang issue sa kanya sa pagiging punsyal. Naging maayos siya. And I'm optimistic he will be able to finish his third and last term. Si Donald Yado, <coughs> nung naging mayor ako, served as uh, one of my staff in the mayor's office. So, yung three years na naglilingkod siya, Marami na siyang natutunan because I would assign him to various tasks more so nitong COVID-19. No? A lot of the things that uh, I had uh, to do, I assigned to him so that he will uh, he'll be able to gain that experience. So, the sports aspect, the youth aspect, the anti-drug advocacy, ito yung focus ni Don and same with uh, James Yap. James Yap, He has a very inspiring story. Mahirap. Galing probinsya. Nagsumikap. Umasenso. Naging PBA superstar. Aspirational yung buhay niya. Every time he speaks now, yung mga tao, pag nakatingin sa kanya, they realize, ito si James. Oh. Galing negros. Simpleng simple dumating dito. Walang kapera vera. Pero nagsumikap, umabot sa kanyang pangarap. Now that he is ending his basketball career, I told him, James, yung inspiration na yan, malaki ang may tutulong sa ating mga mamamayan. Not just for basketball players, but for people in general. For them to see na pwede rin ako maging katulad niya. Na dating mahirap pero umasenso. So, these are things that I know they can uh, inspire our people with. And remember, ako naman ang coach nila dito. Sabi ko sa kanila, huwag kayo manalo na. Gawin lang natin yung plataforma natin. Ito pa rin lang yung mga pangako nyo. Maging tapat kayo mga lingkod publiko. And you will be okay. All right, sir. Now, we have another question from Facebook follower Neil Juliano. Your party wants to win all the council seats in order for your plans to go smoothly. What happens when opposition candidates for councillor sneaks in? How do you go about it? Well, the objective is to sweep the entire ticket. And I'm, again, optimistic that uh, we will be able to do this. Just in case, uh, worst scenario, merong manalo sa kanila, no? Naranasan ko na naman itong first term ko eh. During my first term, I only had three councillors who won in my ticket in 2019. But just after a few days, a majority of them transferred already and supported our administration. So I know how to handle opposition councillors. In fact, what I was telling about earlier, our opposition councillors voted against the... Ordinance appropriating 50 million pesos for the procurement of vaccines. It's all a numbers game. Parang Kongreso lang yun at Senado eh. Kahit may opposition, if they cannot come up with the numbers, then uh, they will not be a bother. Nakita ko naman na uh, yung majority vote ng ating uh, council ngayon is enough to be able to implement our plans and programs. More so kapag 15-0 na siya. Ito rin yung sinasabi ko nga sa kampanya. Kung meron tayong mga opposition councillors na ang trabaho nila ay oppose lang na oppose, alam niyo na kung sinong dapat i-vote at hindi. Pwede ko naman maging, no? Pwede ko naman maging opposition councillor pero boboto ko pa rin sa mga ordinansa makakatulong sa iyong lungsod. But there's nothing wrong with that. When I lost in 2016, I had three councillors who won. I never told them to vote against Mayor Guilla Gomez's plans and programs. Sabi ko, basta maganda sa San Juan, bumoto kayo. Pero sila, pondo sa bakuna. Common sense, di ba? So, that's how we will manage it. 
Thank you so much, Mayor Zamor. And now we are down to our last question from social media. This one is from Hubert P. of uh, Twitter. San Juan is known for Green Hill shopping, but it is also a very historic city as the site of the Pinaglabanan Shrine. Last year, you opened an underground tunnel and made San Juan a greener place for bikers. What are your further plans for tourism and environment of San Juan City if you elected for a second term? Tunay na pinagmamalaki po ng San Juan ang pinaglabanan ng shrine. Lalong-lalo na ngayon na nagbukas na po ang El Deposito. Just to give everyone a background, pinaglabanan ng shrine, yan ang inatake ni Andres Bonifacio no? August 30, 1896. Dahil yan ang water reservoir ng mga Kastila nung panahon ng Himagsikan. So the water supply of Metro Manila then was the Pinaglabanan Shrine. Yung El Deposito ay yung water reservoir sa ilalim ng shrine. Kaya yun inatake ni Bonifacio kasi gusto niyang makuha yung water supply and also the armory which is yung El Pulvorin naman. Ito naman ay around 500 meters away dito naman sa San Juan Elementary School. So because San Juan was the location of the water and armory source of the Spanish during the time, inataki yan ni Andres Bonifacio. They lost in the Battle of Pinaglabanan, but eventually it became a catalyst of bigger battles which eventually gave us our independence on June 12, 1898. Ngayon, binuksan na ang El Deposito. Yan po ay uh, sa tulong ng NHCP, ang uh, National Historical Commission of the Philippines. No less than President Rodrigo Roa Duterte was our guest of honor. So you can go down and walk around 50 meters into the tunnel and experience being back in uh, 1898. Ito'y napakalaking oportunidad upang lumago ang local tourism ng San Juan. So we are pushing for local and historical tourism that once we go full blast in promoting the El Deposito, the Pinaglabanan Shrine, and all our other historical sites in San Juan. Kasama dyan ang Santuario del Santo Cristo, our oldest church na panahon pa ng mga Kastila. Itinayo. Kasama din dyan ang Iglesia ni Cristo ang central office ng INC bago sila lumipat sa Quezon City dyan po nakahimlay si Ka Felix Manalo ang uh, nagsimula po ng Iglesia ni Cristo nandyan din po ang uh, Marcos Ancestral Home kung saan tumira si Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos nandyan din po ang Club Filipino kung saan sumumpa si Pangulong Corazon Aquino bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas noong 1986. So you can see that San Juan is very rich in history and that is something that we would like to promote. Also, San Juan was awarded as the most bike-friendly city in 2020 because of our bike lanes. We will incorporate all of this. Magkakaroon kami ng historical trail. You can go around using your bicycle or you can go around using your vehicle but what's important is discover the rich history of San Juan pagkatapos mong ikuti ng historical sites namin pwede kayong mag shopping naman at kumain sa Green Shopping Center so ito yung plano namin no? uh, hindi kasi pwedeng haya lang natin na ganito eh. meaning we have to really push and promote and now that the pandemic is close to over no? for an hour no? we can focus on this for a very long time during the higher alert levels lalo na ng ECQ MECQ bawal kasi yung mga museums na no? bawal yung mga tourist sites so even now hindi pa rin talaga ganong ka full blast no? there will still be people who will be cautious of going uh, to museums Your underground tunnel kasi enclosed siya, no? So you really have to go down and you have to walk. So, yun ang vision ko uh, for San Juan to be a uh, very significant historical tourism site in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Mayor Zamar.
Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Mayor Zamora. Ang dami talagang magandang historical spots. And I feel that it will not only help um, promote nationalism for the people who live in San Juan, but also for the whole country. So we're excited for that. We also have a few more questions, a little bit more personal, Mayor. So we'll start with, your father, Ronaldo Zamora, has built a strong legacy, not only in the city of San Juan, but also in the executive and legislative aspects of our national government, as you've mentioned earlier. What lessons did you learn from him that you are applying now in your life and in your campaign? Nga nung bata ako, ang parating pinapaalala sa akin ng aking ama na, take care of our family name. Ever since I was young, no, high school, no, hindi ako yung typical na anak ng politiko na nakikipag-away, no, na mayabang. No. Dahil lumaki ako na pinapaalala ng aking ama, no, you have to always take care of our name. Yun nga yung, that's what sets us apart from our predecessors in San Juan. <laughs> Kahit ng kampanya dati, sinasabi na, kami, pagsabihin sa Mora, never, no, never yan ma-associate sa corruption, never yan ma-associate sa nakakasuhan. No, it will always be associated to good and clean governance. And during my first term, wala naman kayong narinig na kahit ano, na anomalya o kalokohan mula sa akin. Ganon din kay Congressman Noni Zamora for his entire 10 terms as Congressman of San Juan, even when he was Executive Secretary of the Office of the President, wala tayong narinig na anumang anomalya, kaso, kalakohan, o isyo ng korupsyon. So that is something that he has instilled in me ever since I was young. At yun din ang sinasabi ko sa mga anak ko. Maging mabait kayo, maging humble kayo, be like me. Because this is how I was taught by your grandfather. So, yun ang ano, yun ang something that will always uh, stick to my mind and my heart. Iba talaga pag modeling, by example, di ba? So, we move on from your father, we move on to your wife, Carrie. She's also very active in social civic projects. How is she, can you share more on how she's supporting in your political career? Ito naman, marami na rin may alam. No? But in 2019, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, to be specific, uh, stage 3A breast cancer. And uh, we found out one month before the campaign started. So you can only imagine yung challenge no? na magsisimula na yung kampanya, tapos na-diagnose yung asawa ko with breast cancer. In fact, she was not able to join the entire campaign trail except for the final day ng meeting the avance. Sabi ko, kailangan makita ka na. Kailangan makita na tayo as a family. Kasi baka isipin nila, ah, nako, baka naghiwalay na. Baka nag-aaway. <laughs> Kasi people were speculating. Eh, why was not? Uh, why was my wife not joining? No, there was, there was a lot of speculation. So sabi ko, uh, people will have to know. It's their right to know. And uh, eventually, when people found out about it, syempre, maraming na-shock, no? maraming nalungkot. And it has been a uh, challenge for us the last three years. But one thing that I love about my wife is that after all the treatments, no? six cycles of chemotherapy, several surgeries, radiation, lifetime medication, Nagbago yung outlook niya. Naging advocate, naging advocate siya ng women's health, specifically for those uh, with cancer. Uh, she started the Caring Carry program, which we are now formalizing into the Caring Carry Foundation, because this is her way of sharing her story. Yung story niya, ng pinagdaanan niya, yung takot. Hanggang ngayon, natatakot pa rin siya, no? There are times that she would become anxious, thinking that babalik yung cancer niya. Yung storya niyang ganyan, yan din ang storya ng napakaraming kababaihan, hindi lamang sa San Juan, ngunit sa buong Pilipinas at ganun din sa buong mundo. So the Caring Carry Program helps 
cancer patients, helps women, helps families and children. So, natutuwa ako dahil yung experience niya, kinonvert niya into something positive. So, gumagalaw siya on her own. In fact, sometimes, I'm not even aware, marami na siyang mga sariling schedule niya, which I appreciate. Kasi mas linya niya yan eh. Pagkababaihan, syempre mas alam ng isang babae. At doon niya ako natutulungan. Siya ay isang tunay na first lady. A first lady has a lot of important functions and she is able to execute them. Just yesterday, she was awarded by our pop dev uh, during the closing ceremonies of our Women's Month celebration because of all the programs that she has implemented. So I'm thankful that uh, she has become an advocate for women, uh, family, for the youth. And uh, I know that she will be able to continue helping me Lalo na ngayon, kasi nung panahon siyempre ng COVID, nung matataas ang kaso, ingat din siya lumabas. But now that the cases are low, mas matapang na siyang uh, umikot sa community. And I expect that she will be more active in the years to come. Now that uh, she is getting a lot better, three years out na siya from cancer. But again, the reality with cancer is you can never say it's over. Kaya nga minsan, hindi naiintindihan ng tao. <clears throat> Wala naman talagang cure ang cancer. Pero kailangan ipagdasal mo na hindi ito babalik. Some people survive it all the way till the end. And unfortunately, some people have to face a recurrence. We are praying hard na hindi yan mangyari sa amin. Pero at the same time, We also understand that as a way of thanking, thanking God for the blessing of life for her, ito yung ibinabalik din namin sa community na makatulong siya sa mga taong dumadaan din sa ganitong klaseng sakit. Kaya every time I encounter a cancer patient, I encounter so much medical assistance requests. Lahat ng sakit, alam ko na, kahit hindi ako doktor. <laughs> Kabisado ko na lahat ng sakit. Pero kapag lumapit sa akin ay may cancer, iba ang kurot sa puso ko. Kasi yan ang sakit ng asawa ko na kanyang nilalabanan. Okay. So, um, we have one last question. Since nabanggit mo na from your father to carry, how is your family life? How is your family coping? Kasi nga, busy talaga ng campaign season. Well, I'm proud to say that uh, I'm a very hands-on father. Ako naman talaga hands-on by nature. Pero when it comes to my family, every opportunity na makasama ko sila, talagang ginagawa ko. Even to the smallest detail, sports fest sa skwela, family day, of course, yung mga birthdays. I'm proud to say that all the four times that my wife gave birth, I was present in the delivery room. Ako ang umutol ng uh, umbilical cord <laughs> ng aking uh, asawa. Four times. No? In fact, the first time, I remember I said, I have to go home first because I have to get the camera. Kasi kailangan yung first family picture natin, makuha ko. So, yan ang aking uh, bagay na pinagmamalaki, that I'm able to balance my roles and responsibilities as the father of San Juan and my roles and responsibilities as the father of my four children. Uh, Amanda's our eldest, she's turning 21. She was able to uh, be a part of Pinoy Big Brother. So, syempre, as a father, may mga panahon na nagiging stage father din ako. <laughs> Lalo na nung nasa PBB siya, na marami mga <clears throat> online campaigns na kailangan ikampanya siya para dun sa PBB. So, sabi nga ng mga tao, Mayor, stage father pala kayo. So, that's my way of showing my daughter my support for her. Ang aking eldest boy naman, si Rocco, he's now in grade 11 in Lasal Green Hills. Gusto niyang maging katulad ng kanyang ama na maglaro rin sa UAP. So I'm pushing him hard 
In fact, ang mga coach niya, yung mga teammate ko dati na nag-PBA, si Ren Renetualo and si Don Aliado. So, I, I support him in such a way that I want him to experience what I experienced also, which was uh, to be able to play at a high level in college, which is in the UAP. My son, uh, Nicolas, our second son, siya naman yung very artistic na mahilig sumaya, mahilig mag-tiktok. Siya yung uh, very creative and artistic. So, yung mga hilig niya ay bagay na aking ipinaparamdam sa kanya na supportive ako. And our youngest son, Noah, na medyo kakaiba yung hilig niya, which is boxing. Pero magaling. Minsan nga, nakatayo lang ako, bigyan susunto ako okay, dito sa, 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 sa ribs ko. <laughs> so he really has a professional coach teaching him how to box. And uh, right now, mahilig na hilig naman siya magpalipad ng drone. So he's turning nine years old. Si Nicolas naman is 11 and Rocco 17. So I'm juggling uh, roles between uh, being a father of San Juan and uh, our kids. But I believe that uh, I've been doing a good job as a father and as a husband. Siyempre bilang asawa. No? I have been a very, very loyal husband uh, to my wife all throughout our marriage. In fact, all throughout. Uh, our years together so we met in 1997 November 30, 1997 Bonifacio Day so from that time on up to now no, it's been uh, 26 years, uh, 25 years no, turning 26 next year na magkasama kami so I'm lucky that <clears throat> I have a very intact and happy family Thank you, Mayor. Kitang-kita talaga namin sa mga, sa Instagram and Facebook mo, how you remember all the special dates of your family, and even for San Juan. So thank you very much, Mayor Francis Amor, for your insightful responses and for accepting our invitation to be on our hot seat. Oh, well, uh, una sa lahat, maraming salamat po sa Manila Bulletin, of course, uh, to Mr. Emil Yap and to all our panelists. At sa lahat po ng uh, nanonood ngayon, Maraming salamat sa inyong pag sa akin at sana po ay uh, nasagot ko ang inyong mga katanungan at sana po ay uh, nakita niyo rin po ang ating uh, pagsusumikap bilang mayor ng San Juan and to each and every San Juanian nyo watching and listening I hope that you will continue to trust your mayor because I will continue to work hard uh, for the fulfillment of our makabagong San Juan promise Please trust me once again for another term And uh, rest assured that I will always be here to lead our city, more so now as we fight this pandemic. Maraming salamat po sa That is our hot seat episode for today. We hope that you have learned something new about our candidate for mayor in the city of San Juan. And we hope that this can help you make an informed decision about the upcoming elections. Dahil ang pagkakaroon ng matalinong boto ay isang responsibilidad ng bawat Pilipino para sa magandang bukas. Please like and share this video and subscribe to all of the Manila Bulletin social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Please use the hashtags MB Hot Seat Zamora, Matalinong Boto 2022, and Magandang Bukas. Till next time, I'm Jane King Sucheng, and this is MB Hot Seat.